Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our next guest joining us, Melissa Norgren, joining us here. Talk more about what she does as a learning support specialist. Excited to have her here from Portland, Oregon. How are you today? Um, I'm I'm feeling fine. We have a nice sunny day. Spring is changeable, lots of rain, but today is sunny. So that's yeah, I nice. know. Same in, for New York. Well, nice to have you here. I know you're helping so many struggle academically due to being dyslexic and thinking in their style in a sense. Um, so you are working with people one-on-one and all clients of all ages to really help establish their true learning needs. And what is the name of your company? Oh, yes. Yeah. So my company is called Dyslexia Dynamics Learning Support. Perfect. And the website, just want to confirm so everyone can oh, yeah. contact you. Mm-hmm. The website, it's it's kind of long, <laughs> dyslexiadynamicsoregon.com. Beautiful. Well, thank you for being here and for helping so many with what you do. And first and foremost, I would really like to get a little bit of your background and uh, share, um, you know, what brought you here into this field, helping so many. Yes. Yeah, so I kind of, I come from a family of educators and um, my grandmother and my mother were both teachers, different grade levels or age levels. So, um, and I always like to say that I, I sort of started teaching as soon as I was old enough to be older than someone else. Mm-hmm. So I was a babysitter and I had younger cousins. I worked in the church nursery. Yeah. First job out of college, I worked at a daycare center. So all of those just confirmed my interest in um, child development and uh, um, the gratification that comes with helping people reach their potential through one-on-one guided learning. Beautiful. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah, so I was reading that. It's a long line of teachers, right? And right. Um, you mentioned you began spending time with your younger cousins, helping them at church and uh, the nursery, babysitting, and um, it was gratifying to you, right? So could you share how this love of teaching brought you here? Just give us a little more of your background. And by the way, where did you grow up? Oh, yeah. So um, I live in Portland now, and I grew up in Oregon. I did. Okay. Att- I attended college um, in Massachusetts, so I've I, I have always had relatives on both sides of the continent, so I get to feel at home both places. Um, but um, Oregon is my home, and I've lived here all my adult life. So I um, I was a daycare teacher with the very youngest in the infant and Aww. toddler rooms, which I found to be um, maybe not everybody sees this as obvious, but having that understanding of child development at the very earliest stages is really um, um, impactful and and gives us information that's important no matter what yeah. age we're working with because those early years are so um, are so important to where we're where we're headed how we get a strong foundation mm-hmm. then, I, um, then I wanted to teach um, older kids in in elementary school and um, and upwards so I returned and got a I didn't get a second degree but I did all the training to get my teaching license so mm-hmm. um, so then I've worked as an educator in many, many different settings like daycares, preschools, public school, um, alternative small private schools, um, done my own programs. So I've worked in a lot of different settings. And um, most recently, I've been a substitute. And I am a substitute across every grade level here. I I do the pre-K programs, our Head Start, all the way up to high school. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're excited to have you here. And I know, first and foremost, we want to talk about um, dyslexia and what that even is. Some people may not even know. Could you share what that is specifically? Yes, I think that's exactly the right place to begin because we're, um, as a society, um, we are definitely changing our understanding of dyslexia. Yeah. When I was growing up, it was not well understood, and we we really have come a long way. So dyslexia is not a learning disability. It's simply a different um, thinking style. And people used to believe that it was rare. That's not true. Um, we It's widely accepted now that it's 20% or one out of every five people has some degree of dyslexic thinking ability. And it's it's actually an incredible gift because yeah, I like that you say that. <laughs> yeah, it's a gift. We can't we can't just describe it as a black and white. Um, it's it varies for different individuals how it plays out. But for most dyslexic thinkers, they are thinking in images. 
as opposed to words. And this is why public, or not just public schooling, but traditional schooling causes challenges because it doesn't match the way people think. If our learning is based primarily on copying things from a board, reading texts in print, um, having to do a lot of writing, that's all about symbolic, the letters and words are symbols. Whereas um, many dyslexics are picture thinkers and they're thinking in imagery and so, when we have a style of teaching that matches how people think, then it works better for them. Hmm. Beautifully said. Thank you for sharing that. And also, let's remind everyone, uh, dyslexiadynamicsoregon.com is the website. And we're going to talk today, um, uh, you know, of course, more how dyslexia is viewed as a gift to be embraced and, you know, not a problem to be solved. But you mentioned discouragement is real, but you're not alone, right? So you say, does your child sometimes shut down at school and tell you, I work so hard? Why does it make sense for everyone and not me? Um, right. You know, could you share a little bit about some of the things you hear from right. the children you're working with? Why it's so important to get help that is a better match for how individuals think is, um, not only, I, I use a metaphor of Velcro. So we all have like the fuzzy part in our brain, but it's different, mm -hmm. it's different for each person, what type of fuzzy little <laughs> texture is there. So when the learning that's being directed, presented to us matches and, and, and sticks to our fuzzy side, it will work. But if the learning that's the method of instruction doesn't match how you think, then it doesn't work. And so as you already said, a, children end up with a feeling of, this person's doing okay, that person seems to get it, what's wrong with me? They end up feeling like there's something wrong. Yeah. And then it's a double difficulty because when we get into our fight or flight brain and we're, we're either feeling ashamed or confused or um, you know embarrassed, we're not in our highest evolved brain where best learning happens. So, so when children aren't understanding what's coming at them and then it imp impacts their self-esteem, then school can really become miserable and they feel like, you know, they can't succeed. So this is where I want to meet people and help them move in a new direction. Well, yeah, you talk about, um, you, you know, it's uh, you teaching them to, you say, uh, match how they think, right? They learn well. Who's mm -hmm. uh, Ronald Davis? Did you want to talk a little about him and, yes. and the method? Thank you. Yes. So I... Um, have taken a special certification, which is called the um, Davis Dyslexia Correction Facilitator. That's my title. Now that's a lot of words that don't necessarily mean something to someone who hasn't heard of it. Ronald Davis is himself, um, he's, he's still alive. He created this canon of work um, over 30 years ago. It's being um, used and shared with folks on every continent. It's very, very um, well known throughout the world, um, popular and okay. Europe and Australia, he he discovered that he could move his mind's eye so that you could call it our imagination, but it's like the creative part of our brain that yeah. we're really thinking with. And he could move it outside his head, above and behind to a spot. And this distorted perceptions that often come for people interacting with symbols were eliminated when he had his mind's eye in this place. And then he thought, hmm, does this only work for me? or will this work for other people? Mm -hmm. so he asked volunteers to come in, self-identified self, um, people who, who felt they were dyslexic to come and try these methods. And they determined that yes, in fact, these do work very well for the majority of, of other dyslexic thinkers. Wow. And so then they started training folks to deliver the, the approach. Awesome. And we do everything with clay. I should have, I don't have a piece of clay. Oh yes, we do everything with with um, modeling clay it's not the kind of clay you cast in um you know cook bacon and oven it's 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 um artist clay it's very pliable but we have the folks create their letters in clay and also we make models of um the words that they're learning or the concepts that they're learning so everything is done in three dimensions oh. not lying flat on the table but standing up so it's it's really um it's really something visual and tangible Thank you for that. And by the way, what ages are you working with? So um, the, the Davis method is really designed to be delivered to people of all ages. We, we can work with young folks before they've really gone to school or had too much formal instruction delivered to them. 
And um, we just teach them with these methods to begin with. And to be honest, it works for almost all children. You don't have to be identified as a dyslexic thinker. Working with our hands in 3D is really the best way for most young people to learn. But this method is definitely used with school-aged children who need intervention and help because school isn't working well for them, as yeah. well as adults who have struggled and never really found the right solution. Well, let's walk us through the program. I mean, there's, there's a wide variety of the training programs you offer, but do you want to share some of them? So um, the Davis Method has developed three programs. One is for reading, targeted, okay. focused on reading. One is called the Math Mastery Program, and one is called the Attention Mastery Program. So for folks who may not feel that they struggle particularly with their reading, but just in general, staying focused on their school tasks, on their work tasks, that program might be the most appropriate. Um, my, um, my real specialty is with literacy and teaching people to read. So I focus primarily on the reading program. And um, I don't care if you're four years old or 44 years old, we're going to start with the alphabet because okay. most people who are dyslexic thinkers will have some letters that, um, that are confused. Yeah, it's because their mind's eye is investigating, looking at things from many different angles. So the, the age old idea that people who are dyslexic are flipping letters, it's it's because their mind's eye does not only work in one direction, reading print. It's it's like a drone. It moves around and it wants to investigate the world from all angles. It's not a conscious effort or a conscious thought. That is just the default way that their mind's eye is working. So. We teach a tool to help them for reading, saying, oh, when we're reading, it's like a car, drive in one direction, look in one direction. But when you're problem solving, when you're creating, um, then you can let your mind's eye work the way it's it likes to be. Got it. Interesting. Because also, it's uh, we're at the time where we need to remind everyone how we contact you again. So could you share <laughs> the website, phone number, uh, social media pages, anything in particular that's important yeah, So. You? Um, the best way to contact me is through my website, um, dyslexiadynamicsoregon.com. And um, if you're interested in the Davis Method, I always want people to learn more about that. So you can just type in dyslexia.com and you will get the main um, website for the Davis, the Ronald Davis programs that are helping people with dyslexia. Yeah, but there's um, a whole bunch of different programs, right? Obviously, the one that you mentioned with the dyslexia, but there's also the um, the attention mastery program, the math mastery program, mm -hmm. the reading program. There's a lot. Right. And they have a whole separate, um, well, they're actually starting to combine the websites, but they have a, another program okay. designed specifically to, to help folks who are um, on the autism spectrum. So there's, it's a very rich, it's a very rich canon of work. Oh, all right. Good to know. Now, can I share... Or have you share even tell me some of the stories, some of the people you've worked with, because it's always great hearing how you're helping people. Um, you know, there's some great testimonials on the site I could share. Uh, for example, someone, Jenny Anderson, the mother of a 10-year-old reading program client, says your experience as a teacher in general shines through your Davis work. Benjamin literally adores you and he cannot stop talking about how much he loves the program. It's obvious you understand kids really well. Um, that's a great one. And then here's someone else, Kylie, uh, Keely Bryson, mother of a nine-year-old, says, before starting the Davis program, my son, who's nine, was not reading and still struggled to recognize many letters in the alphabet. It has been such a joy to see my son grasp onto the tools that unlock the door to his academic success. Melissa has a true gift of interacting with her students that makes learning fun. She takes notice of the child's specific interest and she integrates into her teaching method. I highly recommend Melissa to anyone who has a child who is struggling with focus, attention, and learning. And uh, also, um, speaking of, uh, you know, this is great to hear testimonials. Could you share some stories of the parents yes. and the children you've helped? The, the, the boy that you shared the quote from his mother was Jenny and his name was um, Benjamin. Benjamin um, shared with me th during the week. He didn't share it on the day that he had the aha. I'm not sure. I'll always wonder why didn't he tell me right when that happened. But um, some of this learning is very new. It's a new way of doing things. And it takes a while for people to settle in, grasp onto it. Um, the the t technique that I mentioned before of find, helping people find this unique place 
um, it's sort of like the landing pad for the helicopter, if you will, like for the mind's eye that wants to move. Then it's like for reading, we say, okay, bring it here and let it land there and stay there while you're reading. He shared with me toward the end of the week, um, typically these programs are done over a week or sometimes two weeks. Yes. He said, he said, when I got my mind's eye on that spot, the, the shadows of the letters disappeared. So he had really fully explained to me, but for him, when he was reading a page of print, every single letter had like a double image behind it, which made it very difficult. Some people might think, oh, that's a vision problem. You need glasses, but it's a perception problem. So he, when he got his mind's eye on that spot, he said, the, yeah. the shadows disappeared. The letters became clear. And, um, and the other thing, um, his grandmother also had shared a uh, um, testimonial that she she felt a little sorry for her grandson because he had to do this special reading um, you know it's supposed to be summer vacation but he had to do a, a, I think we did it over um, you know parts of two weeks and she's like I felt a little sorry for him but when I saw how Melissa made this program so fun Aww. and personalized for him we on our breaks we were kicking soccer balls because we cooked with we I teach people to do things on both sides of their body there's a lot of evidence that working um, equally on two sides of our body is organizing for the brain. So I'd say, don't just kick with your dominant foot. See if you can aim the ball and kick it to me with yeah. your non-dominant foot. And we take breaks, we make it fun. It's not just like sitting at the table, <gasps> work, work, work the whole time, so. <laughs> Clearly that helps. And if you are listening here today, Melissa Norgren joining us here, go to Dyslexia Dynamic um dynamicsoregon.com for more information uh we still have some uh, nine more minutes to talk about the work you're doing and um there's i don't know if you want to share more stuff from the notes that you sent us about your background your mentor or about you know you know how you're helping people whatever you think is most important okay for today. yeah thank you I'm, i just would like to just touch on a couple of um important points about dyslexia um we already mentioned it's not a learning disability mm -hmm. it's really a gift it's a special way of thinking and thank goodness that there are lots of people who think this way because it it's pretty um it would be true to say that the majority of inventions that exist in the world or um in improvements on um, previous inventions are, are mostly created by folks who think this way. If we didn't have people who could think with this, this mind's eye that's roving around, taking things apart, imagining mm -hmm. what things look like inside where they can't see, um, we wouldn't have inventions. And I could just share some names of some famous um, individuals who have, sure. um, in, you know, made incredible contributions. And that would be um, going back in time, Thomas Edison, he was basically sent home from school and told you're, you're, oh. we can't educate you. And his mother had to teach him because the way that the school was teaching just didn't work for him. And of course, he went on to create, I think he still holds more patents than, um, than any other single individual. Um, Steve Jobs um, didn't finish college. He struggled in school, but he was a brilliant person who clearly had, you know, outside the box, new thinking and created things that we all use and um, um, get help from every day. Um, lots and lots of people in the um, world of um, entertainment, um, acting, mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg, Cher, um, yeah. Kira Knightley, Jennifer Aniston. And um, also people who um, roughly 40% of um, CEOs of, of our top corporations are people who have this outside the box kind of thinking. So Richard Branson is one person who's very, very vocal and shares about his previous struggles with um, schooling and pure academics, but yet, you know, had a, a new way of doing things that helped him <laughs> succeed to an extreme degree. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else I wanted to mention. Um, a lot of writers also, people who can just imagine a world that doesn't exist or create characters. Um, Agatha Christie is somebody else that's, that um, we know um, struggled in school. Wow. Um, but in general, the thing that I, because I had a whole career as a teacher um, and came to this work as a pretty mature person, I chose it because it matched how I really see people best learning. And that is with our hands, um, not just copying things off a board. You could copy something off a board and still not really know what you said. You could cop if you sat long enough, you could copy something in an alphabet that you don't read. Copying is not learning. But when we create things for ourselves, 
um, that means that we are showing the mastery, the understanding. So you could create um, older older students use this method with the clay to create models for um, their science, like physics and chemistry classes. There's there's lots of applications for working with clay to help um, make our learning more deep and lasting. Oh my goodness! Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here, and still want to talk a little more. Um, about the work you're doing and how many people you're affecting now. By the way, is this program offered online? Are you able to work with people out of state? Do you do work, oh, work like that? So, so the pandemic actually opened things up in a way. Previous to the pandemic, the Davis method was only delivered in person, one-on-one. -on -one. People felt very strongly that, that that was the best way to do it. But because many people have their livelihood with this work and many students and adults um, seeking help out there in the world needed the work, we didn't want to just say, oh, sorry, we can't do it. So the folks um, with the most experience um, created some um, practice programs and did it online to see, oh, mm -hmm. can, we, can we do it successfully this way? That being said, I personally still work only in person. That's just what I'm, my strength is to be in the same room with somebody kind of interacting, body language, facial expression, all kinds of things. But um, when people need help and don't live near, um, because there aren't people, you know, in every city doing this. So um, on the website, there's a, there's a whole page that helps you find a provider and it'll say if they give it both um, in person and online, or if people contact me, I can always recommend my colleagues that I highly respect who are very good at delivering it online. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And also, um, you know, just peeking around your website, which I hope people are going to do, uh, dyslexiadynamicsoregon.com. And, um, you know, just to talk a little more um, about, you know, do you need like a formal diagnosis before you start this? You know, how does that part work? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. That's a very important question. It's very um, difficult for families with children in school who, who need help because often schools require them to go to an educational psychologist and get a formal diagnosis and they might not offer them the services until they have that. The way our program works, you do not have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to get a formal diagnosis. We have um, in the initial consultation that would be our first meeting together, we have a long survey of questions and it's very broad. It doesn't only touch on academics, it touches on your, your sports skills and your social skills and what your strengths are. We're always interested in what your strengths and, and gifts are because that is the big picture that we're looking for. So. The, the survey and then um, a couple of assessments that I will do with you, those determine, um, do the services that I offer match the needs that you have? You know, I am not, I would never take money from somebody if I didn't feel that what I was offering was a good match for what they need for their learning. So that assessment that we work through determines, is, is this type of learning, yes. is this form of instruction going to yes. be the right match for you? Got it. Good to know. All right. Well, thank you for that. And let's remind everyone one more time how they can reach out to you if they are interested. You offer initial consultation if someone gives you a call. Yeah. So um, my name is Melissa Norgren. I live in Portland, Oregon. My business yes. is Dyslexia Dynamics Learning Support. And my website is dyslexiadynamicsoregon.com. Perfect. Well, it's a pleasure having you here today. Thank you for doing what you do and continue to do. And I'm looking forward to speaking with you again. I hope we get to talk soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have to all our listeners, stay here. Stay tuned. More of the shows coming right up after the break. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. 
day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.